Hi, everybody. Welcome in. Hello to all of you. I am so happy to be here with you on this Tuesday afternoon. It is gloomy and gray here, and I need a pick-me-up. So let's hang out. Let's make some jewelry, and let's be each other's sunshine, shall we? That was kind of cheesy, but I mean, I mean it. <laughs> I mean it 100% because it is really gloomy and gross today. So, um, yeah, let's let's make something pretty and uh, enjoy the sunshine on the inside. Guys, listen, we did not get to do uh, this bead box, the bargain bead box for March in March. <laughs> and if you've checked your calendar lately, you know that we are um, like two weeks in. What is today's date? Yeah, we're in the second week of April already. There's a calendar up here. <laughs> You're like, what is she doing? Uh, yeah, so um, we are already two weeks in to April. And I just got my April bargain bead box. Like it showed up day before yesterday, I think. Um, I think it was in the mail on Sunday. And we haven't even taken care of March yet. So Oh, that's the plan. Because if you'll remember last week, we were going to do this one. And then I had a power outage. They were working on the power lines around here and the power went out twice last week on Tuesday. Um, so I did not get an opportunity to get together with you guys on Tuesday to do this. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And so for those of you who are a little bit confused, <laughs> let me back up. Let me back up a minute. So we are doing the bargain bead box for March. March, yes, it's April, but we're doing March because we didn't get a chance in March to do it. Um, and it was planned, like I said, for last week, which was also April, uh, but it didn't work out that way. So uh, a lot of you are starting to receive your April box. Uh, we're gonna do that one towards the end of the month, probably on the 30th if I had to wager a guess. Um, but until then, we're going to do the March one and hopefully we'll be able to get the April one in before the end of the month. <laughs> I hate it when this one gets shuffled around because it's my favorite. I love Bargain Bee Box. It's always a fun project to do together and everybody looks forward to it. So when it gets pushed around um, and, and rescheduled, it's really frustrating. A lot of you are saying that, they, that you're either still working on March or you haven't done March yet. So that's good. That's good. Um, just know that your April one is probably in your mailbox if you've not already gotten it yet. So that's how, that's how behind we are. All right. So hello to all of you. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Jennifer. Anita is here. Terry's here. Gloria is here. So uh, as I mentioned, we're going to do the March and I'm going to unbox it because we, we didn't even get to do that part. So we're going to go through what was in the March box really quickly. And then we're going to put together a necklace project. Uh, the necklace project is pretty easy and is just a lot of simple loops, but that's okay. We don't care, right? We just like a good project. Doesn't matter if it's easy or hard or in between. And <clears throat> for those of you who like to shop with Beadbox Bargains and Bargain Beadbox, do not forget my team is dropping a link to my affiliate link uh, with them. And you can also get a little bit of a discount if you want to use that as well. Um, I, I have loved working with Bargain Beadbox forever. I can't even remember at this point how long I have been getting this subscription, but it is one of my favorites. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, Bargain Bead Box is a monthly subscription service, and it is a curated box of beads uh, with a theme every single month. That's what curated means. Um, <laughs> it has a theme every single month. And um, you can also, when you are signed up for a subscription, you can also get a 30% off coupon that you can use over and over again throughout the month on their sister site, Beadbox Bargains. Beadbox Bargains is a great place to stock up on beads, whether it is check glass, gemstones, or findings. Um, they have lots of head pins, eye pins, jump rings, uh, chain, things like that. And then they also have focals. They've got bead caps. They have charms. They have pendants. It's just a really nice place. And using that 30% off coupon helps you feel like you're, you've got like a, a nice wholesale discount. So for those of you who don't have, um, you know, access to a wholesale discount, this 
this coupon really kind of makes you feel like you do. Um, so uh, it's it's a great place to stock up on things. It's one of my favorite places to stock up on things like bead caps. I do get lots of beads from them, but I do love to get tons of bead caps from them because the quality is really nice. And I know that I can stock up on them. And then when I run out, I can go back and get more of the same. Like they change their inventory a lot, but for the most part, they have like some staples that are um, always available. And I really love that. So um, yeah, if you've not had an opportunity to check them out, I definitely recommend doing so. Uh, the subscription to them is right around $21. That's, that's after everything is all said and done. So it's very, very affordable. And what you get is always really nice. Now, that being said, sometimes there's a color palette that you might get that you don't love. It doesn't mean that the subscription doesn't, doesn't rock. It just means that it is something out of your comfort zone. And when I get a month that is out of my comfort zone, I use it as an opportunity to grow as a designer, right? If they send me a yellow or an orange in a color, like in, in a shade that I'm not super fond of, I use it anyway, because it's a great way to stretch yourself creatively and to grow as a designer and creator. So um, just because you might get one or two that you don't love the color, Again, it doesn't mean that the the quality is not there and that uh, it's not a good bargain because it absolutely is. So just remember those kinds of things um, when you get one and you don't love it. Realize that it's not it, it's it's not curated just for you. Like everybody, you know what I mean. Like everybody gets the same thing every month, um, and lots of people not everybody likes the same things i guess is what i'm just trying to say so just use it as an opportunity for growth all right i'm going to turn you guys around and we're going to go through the march one now remember this is march this is not april april is starting to show up in your mailbox but this one was from march so a little bit behind all right this one was one of my favorites this color palette was absolutely amazing so this one was called Seafoam Sunrise, and I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I love the metal inclusion. I love the color palette. I love everything about it. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly here. Let me raise you up a little bit. So we have some 10 millimeter agate. This is a, this was seven and a half inches. I've used some of mine, so I don't have all of those, but you guys, this orange, oh yes, yes, yes. That carnelian color is one of my absolute favorites, and I love a good agate bead, and the matte are really, really cool. So I'm going to sit these here. You know how we do. We make a big pile. <laughs> All right, then we had some eight millimeter flower Amazonite matte round. The Amazonite in this, this shipment was so pretty. Amazonite is one of those where sometimes you can get a, a whole strand and it's this light, almost white color. Um, so I get really excited when I get a strand that has lots of color variation in it. And this one was a really good one. This one had lots of blues and greens in it. So I was really excited about that. So there's the Amazonite and you can see kind of the color palette starting to take, take shape a little bit here. We have more Amazonite. This is a uh, eight millimeter. Look at the color on those. Mm -hmm. So pretty. Are you seeing the seafoam sunrise on this? I hope you are because I am loving it. All right, then we had eight by six crystal faceted rondelle beads. This was the peaches and cream mix. This has that color in it that I absolutely go bananas over. It's that kind of magma orange. It's like orange, red, pink. Oh, love, 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 love. So pretty. This is such a nice palette. All right, this one's one of my favorite beads. This one is an eight millimeter crystal faceted drop in marbled mint. I liked this one so much I reordered so that I could have some more of these. Now, I do wanna mention to you guys that um, this one, I noticed that some people were talking about how the coating on this one was kind of coming off on their fingers. I think it's hit or miss. Um, 
However, even if you're coding, the coding on this does kind of come off. It doesn't come completely off unless you submerge these underwater. So it's not enough that you're really going to notice uh, much of it. But even if it does, it doesn't really change uh, the beauty of this bead. So just know that that's like, that's a possibility that your strand, you might notice that it kind of comes off on your fingers. And what I'm talking about is that iridescent coating. I'm not talking about the actual color. I'm just talking about that kind of iridescent. You know how sometimes you get beads that have sparkles on them or you get a dress that's made out of fabric that's got glitter all over it? It's kind of the same thing where you turn around and the next thing you know, you've got it on your fingers. That's kind of this. Um, but overall, it's a gorgeous bead and I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I, I don't care if it comes off on my fingers a little bit. If I get a little sparkle on me, I'm totally okay with that. Does not bother me a bit. All right. Next up, we have... Some more Amazonite. We have three millimeter Amazonite faceted round beads. These are really, really pretty. They've got those little micro facets on them, so they've got lots of shimmer. You know, I love to make clusters out of this size bead. So pretty. Oh, I'm I'm just loving this color palette. And when the metal comes into play, it really kind of ties this all together. Gloria says she's not a fan of orange, but she'll do her best. Gloria, that's all I can ever ask of you ever, my love. And I know orange can be a difficult color to work with, but when you see it with other colors and with the metal in particular, I think it might, might help a little bit, right? However, that being said, if you wanted to take all of the orange out of this and just use the turquoises and the whites that are in here, I don't think that would be bad either, right? I think you can totally make this work just by taking the orange out and you're still going to get some really beautiful pieces. So I get it. I get it. Uh, orange is kind of, can be kind of a challenge. Okay. Next up is Amazonite Top Drill Teardrops. There were two of these. Those are really pretty too. They've got those beautiful facets on them. They really nailed the Amazonite color. Like here's the Amazonite color and then the glass bead to match it. You know what I mean? Like that they really matched the gemstone with the glass here, which I think was fantastic. All right. Now there's a couple of things that I've got elsewhere. I'm going to have to show you here. So there was an Amazonite teardrop pendant and we're using this in our project. So I have it set to the side, but that big old teardrop, gosh, that's pretty. And the other thing was um, some chain and I'm going to show that to you here in just a second because now we're going to kind of move into the metals with this. Okay, so I'm going to sit this over here to the side. Hi, Lisa. All right, so we've got some scrolled bead caps. This is one of my very favorite bead cap designs. And this one is in antique copper. That is, the, in my opinion, a great metal to kind of tie the orange and the teal together. However, if you wanted to take the oranges out, like I mentioned to Gloria, if you're just not an orange person and you just, it's, you're too, super uncomfortable with it, maybe make, maybe use silver instead of the antique copper. I don't know. I mean, play around with it and see. But I think the antique copper really kind of helps to bring the orange down to a level that is not like, you know, it, it makes it a little less intimidating, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I personally am a huge fan. So <laughs> so I might not be the best person to ask, um, but I, I do love the antique copper with this. I think that it, it is just a beautiful addition. However, what I wanted you to see because this is a great example of bead caps that you can get over on the bead box bargains. Um, they have this one in a lot of different colors. So they have it in like the brassy gold color. They have it in antique brass. Sometimes I think I see it a lot in the copper and I know that they have it in like an antique silver. So if you like bead caps, this is a really pretty one. It's a good size because it, it, it will fit on a lot of beads. It's a seven millimeter. So it's going to work with a six millimeter bead. It's also going to work with a seven and an eight millimeter bead. So, um, or bigger. I mean, it just kind of depends, but um, love that. Okay. There are some lever back earring components. There are uh, 10 of these, which is nice because you're going to get five pairs of earrings out of that. And again, it's in the antique copper color, which is really lovely. There were a few of these. Uh, there were four of these. Two of these I have out. Uh, scrolled chandelier finding. I love these because you can make multi-strand designs with this. 
So if you wanted to do like a three strand necklace in the front and then finish it off with a single strand, or you can use these as earring chandeliers, put your ear wire on the top and do some little dangles. We're gonna use ours in a very different way today. I'm gonna to show you in our, our necklace. We also had some toggles that I have used the rings for other things. There were three sets of modern floral toggles. This is another great place to get clasps. Uh, if you like toggles in particular, uh, Beadbox Bargains always has really nice toggles to choose from. Some really cool ones that I, I don't see anywhere else. So uh, it's a great place to stock up on your clasps. Now, I've got toggle bars left behind here. There were three sets. We're going to use uh, two and a half. <laughs> or wait, two and a half? That's, yeah, we're using two and a half. That, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I thought these were really pretty as well. This was a filigree teardrop. There are two of these are sitting, one sitting on top of the other, but look how pretty. I love these. This is another great example of things that you can find uh, outside of beads over on the Beadbox Bargains. Um, and just so you know, we're kind of late in the month for this one since we're already into April now. Um, but every month you can reorder the things that are in the box. They'll send you um, an email and let you know, you know, hey, we've got box extras if you want to grab some of the extra things uh, that were in the box. So if you wanted to reorder these, you absolutely could. I don't know if they still have them now because like I said, now we're into April. Um, but they do have other amazing things like that. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Oh, I loved these. These spacer beads. These are ornate lantern spacer beads. I love their spacer beads. I grab these in every color that they have. Um, and, and they usually do have them in all of the metal colors, except for rose gold. I don't think I've seen any in rose gold or the hematite color, but in your basics, which is your copper, your silver and your gold, um, I always, and antique brass, I always grab them up because it's, it's always nice to have a really pretty spacer bead. All right. Then we have some eye pins again, just to show you that you get things not only in your monthly subscription, but that are available for purchase over on their website. The quality of their eye pins is always really nice. So I always stock up on those. I have little baggies of them that I have gotten from them. So I like that a whole, whole lot. All right. What else am I missing here? Oh, the chain. So I have the chain set to the side. I love it when they incorporate chain. It's really nice to have some chain in your, um, your subscription box in the same color metal as everything else, which they always do, which is really, really nice. We're going to use ours in our project today. All right. So that is just a, a small little, a little overview, if you will, of the bead box or the bargain bead box for the month of March, even though we're already into April. Um, and <clears throat> just a really nice representation of what you can expect monthly if you've not signed up for their subscription service. I'm going to sit this all over here to the side and we're going to get right into our project. So we're going to put together a necklace project today using some of the beads and I want to lay this out for you so that you can see of course there's the chain and we're going to be using it actually put this as a triple strand but we'll talk about that more in a minute so I'm going to sit the chain up here to the side and we're going to talk about the front of our necklace so what I did for our necklace was I wanted to put together a really fun kind of focal in the front. So I grabbed these little chandelier components and I thought, you know, it would be really fun if we used these to hang a pendant from. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make two of these and we're going to face them to each other just like this. We're going to hang our Amazonite drop from that and in between here remember those metal beads that I said I loved so much yeah we're gonna put those right in here with some eye pins to create just a really different kind of fun I mean it's not it's not crazy different but just a fun little focal here in the front using some of our components in some unexpected ways which is one of my favorite things to do Okay, so this is where we're going. This is our jumping off point, okay? 
from there, I wanted to take some smaller pieces of our chain. So I've got one, two, three, where's the fourth? There it is. I cut four little pieces of chain, all the same length, put a jump ring on those. And we're actually going to come up from here and we're gonna do little pieces of chain. Sorry about the robot. <laughs> we're gonna come up from that. Some little chain here in the front. Okay, so some little chain. Then I'm using, remember the toggles? I told you we were gonna use the toggles, kind of different. I'm gonna use the toggles there, right? And then we're gonna do some beaded stuff up from these, but let's let's do this part first, okay? Let's, let's start here. Susie says, this is so pretty. Thank you, Susie. I thought I, I, I've, of course, blah. Okay. <laughs> I was inspired just because I'm using some of my favorite things here. Antique copper and orange. I'm all about that. And I'm picky about my orange. It's not just any orange. It's that, that kind of magma colored orange that to me can be copper, can be pink, can be orange. I'm, it's, you know, it kind of, it's not just like, crayon orange. So I get really excited when I have the opportunity to use that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our little, let's start with putting our component together here. And we're going to do that just by putting each one of our metal beads on to eye pins and doing just simple loops. And then we're going to attach those loops to our component. So let me grab my pliers and let's go ahead and get started with that. All right. So I'm using some of the eye pins that were included. Grab a couple of those. All right, so we're just gonna do simple loops. So each one of those is gonna go onto an eye pin. <laughs> Sherry says it's not 50-50 bar orange. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bend the wire right where it is exiting the bead. Okay, I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool. I'm gonna trim off, leaving myself about fourth of an inch of wire. And then I'm gonna use my round nose pliers, grab that wire. We're gonna roll back to make ourselves another simple loop. So it's got simple loops on both sides and you're gonna do three of those. And then we're gonna attach those to those little chandeliers. All right, oops. <clears throat> so let's do another one. Okay. So same thing, cutting off about a fourth of an inch and then using our round nose pliers to roll back to make a loop. Okay, so now we're gonna open up each one of those loops. Okay, so let's start with the one I just created. I'm gonna twist to open it. I'm not pulling it apart, just kind of walking it open with a little twist. I'm going to attach that to one of the loops on the chandelier component, and I'm gonna close that back. And then I'm gonna open the one on the opposite side. Same thing with a little twist, and then another chandelier loop. And then I'm gonna, whoa, I'm gonna twist to close that back. So you can see that's where we're going with this. Okay. So let's do the next one. Sometimes it's hard to figure out which one of these opens. Okay. This one's going to go in the middle. Close that back. And then same thing. So on the opposite side of that, I'm going to twist to open. And then attach that. Thank you, Sherry. I thought it was a cool idea too. And you don't, you don't even have to put the beads in here. 
I thought the beads were a nice little addition, but honestly, you could just put jump rings. You know, put a jump ring to connect the two connectors together. Uh, you don't even have to put a bead. Uh, or you could use those little faceted Amazonite that were in here in the in the shipment. Um, so you could really kind of, or a rondel, one of the, I don't know, the rondels might be a little too big. I think the rondels might be too big to do that with, but yeah. But you definitely could use smaller beads or just jump rings. The biggest issue is just making sure that everything is going the correct direction. Particularly when you go to do the, the opposite side. All right, so there is our little component. Now I've already put a jump ring on here up at the top of this, um, but I'm going to do the same thing down here on the bottom. And my pendant has got a loop. It's got a bail on it with the loop facing towards me. So I needed a go between because the loop here is also facing towards me. So I'm using just a little small jump ring as my go between. How pretty is that? I honestly, I, I do love the rest of this necklace, but I will be 100% honest with you. I would just put this on a really long piece of leather or a really long piece of chain, just like that, you know, and just throw it over my head and wear it. I think that would be so pretty, but we are going to do the extras because, you know, we like to be extra, but you definitely could get away with just you know, putting it on something and calling it done. Cause that's pretty all by itself. All right. So I've got a larger jump ring here. This one looks to be at like, I think about a 10 millimeter jump ring. Thank you, Dawn, for using our super stickers on YouTube. I appreciate you so, so much. <laughs> Kim says, where do you get your ideas? Cause they are genius. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really think about it. Honestly, I'm just like, hmm, what can I do that's different today? That's usually how things start is, okay, let's try not to make the same thing today as we made yesterday. And sometimes that works for me and sometimes it does not, as you guys know. <laughs> sometimes we just make the same things. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take that large jump ring. Now, remember, I've cut four pieces of chain here. The chain is going to be the next thing. I've added six millimeter jump rings to each end. Um, but the raw end doesn't, I'm going to just thread it directly onto this jump ring here. So again, going to open and I've put a little four millimeter jump ring as my go between so that this loop and this big jump ring are front facing, right? Okay. Then I'm going to thread on a little pieces of chain. My pieces of chain are about an inch long each. They are one, two, three, four, five, six lengths long, and it is the chain that was in the um, in the in the box. So I didn't use anything different. It's exactly what what you got in your your March box. All right, and the same thing over here on the other side. I'm doing two pieces of chain on those sides, and then I'm going to close this back. Okay. All right, now I'm going to use these jump rings. So the jump rings for me were already there. Like, in other words, when I took this apart, I put this together and then I took it apart. When I took it apart, I left the jump rings on here. I'm going to go ahead and reopen. Cats are fighting. If it's not the dogs, it's the cats. I'm telling you, it's always something around here. Uh, but I'm going to open these jump rings and attach these to the toggle rings. If you'll remember, there were three sets of toggles. We're using two and a half for today's project. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach these. And I also really kind of, I love using things in unexpected ways because, sorry, I'm trying to straighten this chain out before I, atta I attach it. Uh, because a lot of times when you're using things in unexpected ways, first of all, 
you're using things a lot of times that you already have. For instance, we're using things in the box that we got this for the month of, of March. So these are all things that uh, were uh, are available to those of you who have the March box, right? So I don't have to look for anything extra. I'm just looking for different ways of using them. However, that can be applied to your own stash of things as well, right? I know a lot of us in that, that have this as a hobby or have this as a career, we do love to buy. And I am just as guilty as, as everybody else. I love to buy new stuff. I want new stuff to work with. However, sometimes it's good to just kind of shop your own stash, shop the things that you've already got in your workspace, just find a new way to use them, right? If you've got a couple of toggles that are laying around that, you know, you're not necessarily going to use, maybe they're too big or, you know, they're just, it's just not your, your favorite. You got them somehow, you know, use them for, as a link instead. You don't have to, nobody says you have to use things the way that they were intended you know what i mean you can you can get creative with the things that you've already got in your stash before you go out and spend a ton of money on new things look at what you've already got that's just kind of the point i'm trying to make here i know that um you know some of you will have spouses that will appreciate that sentiment <laughs> so i i understand i i get it i get it because sometimes it's like we buy so much stuff and then we don't know what to do with all of it and I'm very guilty of that. All right, so I'm gonna do a beaded chain on one side here. I'm gonna use some of these beautiful Amazonite beads and I'm gonna use some of those bead caps and I'm gonna do a beaded chain that is four beads long. I'm going to take advantage of the eye pins. So I don't even have to dig in my own stash. I can use the ones that I've already got and I'm just going to link these together directly. I'm not gonna use jump rings in between there. So I'm gonna take an eye pin and I'll go ahead and link to the ones that I've already done or maybe this is the first one out of out of all of them, but <laughs> that doesn't work. Always want new, says Catherine. <laughs> Listen, Catherine, I feel it in my soul. <laughs> But I'm trying to be encouraging today. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to um, to be your pusher today. Today I'm trying to encourage you to use what you've got. <laughs> They'll talk to me next week, and it might be different. But all right. So I'm gonna thread on a bead cap, one of the beautiful beads, and then another bead cap. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm trying to behave, okay? And I'm trying to encourage you to behave as well. However, should you like to use my affiliate link <laughs> to buy some new things? Oh my goodness. Stop. All right. I'm going to bend that wire. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool. Oh goodness. And I'm going to trim off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. I can't say I didn't try. I tried. I tried. All right. And then I'm going to roll back to create a simple loop. Okay, so I'm going to do four of those. Okay, and so that means we need to add one more. I'm going to open that loop that I just finished with a twist, add on the next one, close that back, and then threading on my bead cap, my bead and my bead cap. Guys, listen, um, your bead caps are a great way. So let's, let's talk about gemstones for a second, because a lot of times they're not perfect, right? We hope, I mean, unless we're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars of like the top of the line gemstones, but like for the rest of us, regular people, sometimes you'll get a gemstone strand, um, not just from bargain bead box, but anywhere in general, whether you got them from Tucson or you got them from Sam, or you got them from bargain bead box, you got them on Etsy or wherever you happen to get them. Sometimes they are not perfect. And this is true with glass beads too, because sometimes you can get a, um, like a rondelle that might have a crack in the top of it, particularly at the hole, uh, where they get drilled a lot of times is the number one place where you're going to find some inconsistencies, um, particularly cracks. Bead caps are the best way to cover those kinds of things up. And I mention it because it wasn't this one, but one of the beads that I had used had a little, it had a little, it, it wasn't really a crack. It was just, I mean, I guess it was, it was a chip that was missing, but it was right at the hole where the bead had gotten drilled. 
popping a bead cap over the top of it saves the life of that bead, right? It means I don't have to throw that bead away. I can still use it. I mean, I could have used it anyway, but I can still use it and you don't see the chip by putting a bead cap on it. So bead caps can not only just be a beautiful accent, but they can really kind of cover up any kind of damage that you might have to a gemstone or a glass bead. So uh, it's a good thing to have on hand. Good thing to have on hand. All right, so making a chain out of four of those, okay? And then I'm going to attach those on this side. So I'm making an asymmetrical design if you haven't, hadn't quite figured that out from the picture yet, but I'm going to do asymmetrical. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up and I'm going to attach it to the top of my toggle ring here. You could use a jump ring here if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna attach mine directly to it. Okay. All right, so there's one side. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. Now, if you don't want to do an asymmetrical design, you've got enough of these beads and bead caps to do the same thing on this side as well. Okay, you don't have to make this different on, on both sides. You can make it exactly the same. But I like to be a little different. So I'm going to make mine asymmetrical. I'm also going to create a little chain section out of rondelles. And I'm just going to use um, one, two, three, four, right? Why do I have this bead over here? <laughs> I'm going to do uh, the same thing, just a an eye pin chain, so no jump rings in between here. Okay, and I'm going to attach three more to what I've already got here. So I'm going to have kind of like orange on one side and the teal color on the other side. <laughs> Janelda, Janelda says, for some reason, I never have the right beads or findings to do projects. So I have to order more. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> I have to have more. I mean, there's a there's a logical reason. I just don't have what I need to do what I want. <laughs> I could make other things work if I wanted to, or I could just buy new ones. I mean, I <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know Janelle that I it never fails. It never fails that that's the, that's the case. You know, you go to make a project, you know, you've got 10,000 different beads and findings and things in your workspace. And, but the one thing you want to make, you don't have the things you need for it. It never fails. Never fails. <laughs> My. All right. So same thing here. I'm just not using any bead caps, though. If you wanted to, there are plenty of bead caps uh, in this month's uh, shipment. So you could definitely could definitely get bead caps on all of these if you wanted to but i'm just linking five of these together and you'll notice i picked out the orange ones that i wanted so gloria you can pick out the, the like the clear ones if you wanted to and this would still be really pretty <laughs> okay all right, so there's this little section that's gonna come up here. And then just to go one step further with this, I'm going to, I'm gonna use some of the agate just because I wanted to make sure that I, I tried to use as many of the beads as possible. So I'm gonna do a little, a little link in my beaded chain here that is two of the agate beads and I'm gonna add some bead caps to those. So. And, and again, just kind of goes into that asymmetrical design, just kind of different on this side. So another eye pin, and then I'm gonna do a bead cap, two of the matte agate, and I picked out some of the orange colored ones to go with this orange strand. And then I'm gonna do another simple loop. Okay, roll back for that. Okay, and then same with this side, I'm just gonna attach it directly. I'm not gonna use a jump ring. 
I'm just going to use one of the simple loops on my beaded chain here. So I'm just going to open that up. I'm going to thread that on. And then I'm going to close that back. All right. Now, as far as the beads, this is it for the beads. Okay. So I've got one side is the turquoisey Amazonite color. The other side is that orange color. We've got our drop here in the middle. And for the length, I took the chain and I used almost all of the chain. So I used some small sections of the chain here in the front. And then I cut three long pieces of the chain, all the same length. And I put those all onto a jump ring. So there's a jump ring on each end. And I'm going to take one of the jump rings, open that up. I'm going to attach that here. And then remember that third toggle. I'm going to actually use it in the design over here. So I'm going to take this jump ring that's got the other end of all three of my chains and the toggle is going to be kind of in the front. So do the toggle ring. And that's going to come around to right here. And I'm going to put the toggle bar here. My toggle bar has a little jump ring on it. So I'm using another very small jump ring. Gonna attach right there. So your clasp is in the front as part of your design, right? And I know you cannot see all of that, but there's the chain coming down to the front of this. So I'm gonna turn you around, right? Turn you around and I'm going to put this on to the bust so you can see it. You can see how this all came together. Ta -da! <laughs> so there is the necklace. You've got your beautiful Amazonite drop. You've got this really interesting stuff going on here in the front. And you've got your beaded chain on either side, one in the green and one in the orange. Now, listen, you could mix this up any way you wanted to. First of all, like I mentioned, you could you could do either one of these. Like if you don't like the, the two colors, one color on one side and one color on the other side, you could mix those together if you wanted to. Or you could do the orange chain because there's enough beads. You could do the orange chain on both sides, right? So just copy this over here on the other side. Everything's backwards, so I'm having a hard time pointing here. Or you could cover this one and do the green on both sides and just have the whole necklace in this beautiful like Amazonite green and copper. So you don't have to do the asymmetrical thing, right? You absolutely don't. I did it because I, first of all, I love the color combination here, but I did want to use as many of the beads as I could uh, in, in this design for, um, for the, for the bead box, just to show off what was included in the bead box. But I think it turned out really nice because the color palette works really well together, but you don't have to do that. You can do literally anything you want to do. If you want to mix the beads together so that it makes more sense, you want to make the two sides match, or you want to do something completely different, or you just want to use this front piece and just throw onto a long piece of leather or a really long chain, you can do that as well. Like I'm always just looking for ways to inspire you to be creative and to think outside the box. And hopefully I have inspired a lot of you um, particularly with the use of the chains and the toggle rings and then the little chandelier components. It's always fun to kind of flip things on their head and use them in different ways. Now, I know we laughed. We laughed about me talking about like shopping your own stash, but really it's true because I feel like a lot of times when we get into creative rut, I've noticed lately, and I think it's the change in the season, sometimes is when creative rut happens the most. I notice that people post about it the most when we're transitioning from spring into summer or summer into fall. Those transition times can be kind of hard when you're creating um, because you've spent an entire season like kind of 
creating based around the season. If you create like that, um, one really good way to kind of get out of creative rut is to look at the things that you do have. Chanel, though, I'm not necessarily talking about you. <laughs> we're spirit animals. I get you. <laughs> but it, sometimes it's helpful to look at what you've got and think, okay, well, I know what I'm supposed to do with this, but what else can I do with it? Sometimes it's that's enough to get you thinking about, you know, using the things that you've already got in a new way without going and buying new things. Now, listen, <laughs> I also support you if you want to go buy new things. <laughs> I'm just trying to be helpful uh, because I think that we, we forget about things that are in our stash. Uh, but it's hard for a lot of us creative types because for me in particular, like all of these boxes back here, guys, those are full of beads that I use for kits. Now, I look at those beads every week and I get so tired of them. <laughs> I get bored with them just like you do. You know, maybe you don't have as much as I do. Maybe you do. Maybe you have more. Uh, but I get bored with things. So sometimes it's helpful to kind of think outside the box with things, you know, to keep you from going and buying all of this and then getting bored with it, too. So just a thought, just a thought. Am I doing an art bead live tonight? No, I'm not. But uh, hardwired. <laughs> Jan, Jan's turn now listening to a drinking game, which and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> um, but what was I saying? No, I don't have an Art Beats Live uh, this afternoon. I do have um, Hardwired Meets at 4 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. Also set your reminders for 1 p.m. for Friday for our Feel Good Friday show. And I do have my regular scheduled Art Beats Live on Friday. So the, um, the trunk show that I did last week, that rotates. So somebody else, I don't know if there's a trunk show scheduled for today or not, but those kind of rotate. So the next trunk show will be somebody else out of the design team. It won't be me. Um, I'll probably only do one of those Tuesday evenings uh, once a month. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's see. What else? Anything else I need to remind you guys of? Yes, there's. Okay, so there's one more thing to remind you guys of, and that is about Patreon. First of all, Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I love you so much. I have 101 members on Patreon. And uh, I am, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to be filming the project for Patreon and then uploading it. So uh, that's what's that's got it on my mind here because I'm going to transition into that really quickly. If you're not part of Patreon, pa Patreon is, um, is you pay $10 a month on Patreon. You can access that over on Patreon. Um, well, here, because my, my crew is dropping links for that. Um, but if you want to do Patreon, it's $10 a month and you get a weekly. It's supposed to be three a month, but I'm trying to do weekly. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of pushing it that way. Um, an extra project from me, exclusive. Nobody else gets to see it. Not hardwired, not uh, Facebook, not YouTube. It's, it is exclusive to Patreon members. Um, so you won't see it anywhere else. I'm doing a fun vintage project today that's going to be uploaded later. So if you want extra content from me, please come and join Patreon. You also get access to my Discord server, which serves as like a Facebook group. It's just another community hub for people to hang out and chat and post pictures and, you know, be creative and inspire each other. So I definitely want to uh, remind you guys of all of that. Okay, that's it for me. I'm out of here. I'm going to film a Patreon project, Hardwired. I will see you at 4 p.m. The rest of you guys, I will see you on Friday. So don't forget to set your reminders for that. I love you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this project and I will see you very, very soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>